Good morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. If you stand with me at this time, we'll have our call to worship. Amen. Got to still myself after that wonderful, that was a wonderful beat. <laughs> but coming from the 95th, 95th number of songs, okay? you listen to me as I read this word. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. People who love the Lord, let's give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. Okay. Our Reverend Carway is coming with a word of prayer. If the if you love the Lord, come on, let's bless him all over this house. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we come to you humbly as we know how, seeking you more and more, dear Heavenly Father. God, we come acknowledging you as Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees fit that we have everything that we need. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. The Lord God who is our blood-stained banner. God, we come thanking you for being Jehovah Mechadesh. Lord God of righteousness. Jehovah Tiskanu. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Shalom. God, there are so many names, dear Heavenly Father, that each and every person in here could testify that you are God. God, so we come this morning, God, thanking you, God, for being a God like no other. Thanking you, God, for being the God who gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. Thanking you, God, for being the God who is our strength, our strong tower, our fortress, God, that we can depend on. We love you, God. And we bless your holy and righteous name. We honor the God that you are today. Because it wasn't guaranteed to Heavenly Father that we would wake up this morning. So, God... Forget all the materialistic things. Forget all the things that we would desire to do, to have, dear Heavenly Father. But we simply thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. For putting breath in our lungs, dear Heavenly Father. The saints used to say, clothe us in our right mind, dear Heavenly Father. Some of us might think that we might be half crazy, dear Heavenly Father. But you gave us mind enough to come into the house of the Lord. So we thank you, God. God, we thank you for the people that you have put over us, dear Heavenly Father, the leaders in our nation, the pastors, the people that are part of the fivefold. God, we thank you, God, and we come praying for them, God, that you give them strength like never before, that you give them rain of word that manifests logos like never before. God, let your spirit overflow in this house, God, and have your way like never before, God. God, we come, dear Heavenly Father, we could list all the needs in this house, God. But God, I simply ask that you search our hearts. 
God, I ask that you touch those who are bereaved right now. God, if there's anybody who could touch their hearts, God, we believe it's you. If there's anybody who could wrap your loving arms around them, God, we believe it's you. God, if you send us, God, to have a word to say to them, God, we ask that you open our minds, open our hearts to say what it is that needs to be said in a time such as this. God, we come this morning in intercession for our children, God. God, I, what they grow, go through and what, what is going on in their lives is not how we were brought up, Heavenly Father. So we ask them, Heavenly Father, that not only that we pray for them, Heavenly Father, but give us wisdom and impart wisdom into us like never before so that we be able to relate and to speak life into them. For they are struggling and they are distracted, Heavenly Father. But God, let us lead them and teach them as they should. For the word says if we teach them and train them as they could go, when they grow old, they will not depart from it. So God, we lift these things and all these things that you search our heart for unto you. God, we open this service unto you and ask that you receive our worship and receive our praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's people say amen, amen. and amen again. Can y'all put the hands together and believe some things in advance for God? Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Sister Hawker if she has some announcements at this time. Do you have any announcements? Okay, if not, then I'm going to read what I have before me here. On the front it says, your kindness is appreciated. Thank you for your thoughtful gift for Mother's Day. It was very kind. Handel Garden. Amen. Let us continue to pray for the Garden family. Amen. And those who are going through in such a time as this. Amen. If there are not any other announcements or special, amen. You know, praise to my Heavenly Father. Um, I just wanted to announce uh, that the conference in June uh, for the Davis Alliance, we will have rehearsal, a community rehearsal on Monday, this coming Monday at 730. It will be held at Mount Calvary. And just to let you know, you don't have to be in the choir to sing. If you have a voice and you want to lift up the name of Jesus, come and join us Monday night at 7.30. It will be a community mass choir for our conference in June. Thank you. Amen. I guess I'll officially declare. Wait a minute. Hold on. I hear it's a special birthday today. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Lady Garnett? It is her birthday. Amen. Amen. Now you are back in the hands of the choir. Come on, church. Put your hands together. We're going to try to sing this song. Anybody know that the Lord is real?
Sometimes when I'm feeling low, nowhere to go, Jesus comes along and he makes me strong. I know my Jesus. Say Jesus is real. He's real to me. Yes, he is. I'm telling the truth. Yes, he's real. Sometimes when I'm feeling down and no one around, Jesus comes along and From the crown of my head to my feet. I can feel him in my heart, in my soul, and I can even feel him from the crown of my head to my toes. Come on, choir. Say real. Say real. Say real. Oh, yes, he's real. I know he is. I know he is. I know he is. Oh, yes, he's real. Say yes. Anybody know he's real this morning? The song says, there are some things that I may not know. And there are some places that I may never live to go. But there is one thing I do know, that God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise one more time. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh God, our Father, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. God, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. 
our lips overflow with praise. God, because you've been better to us than we could ever think to be to ourselves. And so, Lord, that's why we got up this morning and made our way down to the house of God. Lord, just to show you how grateful we are. Father God, we've come, oh Lord, not only to sing praises and to offer worship unto your name, but Lord God, we've gathered together to be refueled and rejuvenated, oh God. Lord God, to be set back on the right path, oh God. Things happen, oh Lord, between Sunday, oh God, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh God, life comes in and throws curveballs at us, oh God, and presses us down. But oh God, Oh, the world messed up when they let us get to church one more time. Oh, God, we thank you right now for the strength you shall impart. We thank you for the grace and the mercy, oh, God, that you bestowed upon each and every one of our lives every day of our lives. Now, God, we hush our hearts in this moment to hear from you. Our prayer, oh, God, is bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed us till we want no more. Father God, I'm asking now that you will stand in my body that you would think with my mind, and that you would then speak with my mouth. Pray now as the psalmist prays that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, O oh God, let them be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. And all the saints of God say it together, amen, amen, amen. I would, you would rest upon your feet all over the house. Amen. Y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 I want to invite you to take your copy of God's Word this morning. Hold it in the air and repeat these words after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It's God's Holy Word. It's God's Holy Word. It's a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. I believe what it says. I can have what it says if I do what it says because what God's word is true. Amen. 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 I want to invite your attention this morning to 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter. 1 Samuel, the seventh chapter. I wanted to read verses 1 through 12, but for the benefit of brevity, I just want to lift up one verse, verse 12. And then we'll kind of talk and teach our way through it. Are you there? Amen. Bible says, Then Samuel, the prophet, took a stone and set it between Mitzbeth, Mitzbeth and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Herein is the reading of the word of God to the people of God. The grass withers, the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Just in case you wanted to know, I want to talk to you from this subject and this thought, how to get back to God. How to get back to God. I know this message is not for any of y'all. All of y'all are resting your head on his breast and you are in the sweet bosom of Jesus. But if you should ever so happen, get away from the Lord. I want to give you some instructions on how to get back to God. Do I have a praying church this morning? My brothers and sisters, if you're, if you're familiar with the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant at the time of this text served as the point of contact where God met and dwelled with his people. They believed, the children of Israel, that wherever this ark rested, that place was blessed and it was considered sacred space. You could not even touch the Ark of the Covenant. As they would move it from one place to another, they would have to put poles 
on the sides of this Ark of the Covenant to pick it up and to carry it wherever they went. The Ark of the Covenant was a constant reminder of the protection and the love of the God that delivered them out of the brick kilns of Egypt. Not only out of Egypt, but has been delivering them their entire history. Wherever Israel moved, the ark went on before them. But before long, brothers and sisters, as I hurry along, um, that which was at first sacred, over time became common. That which was holy uh, became commonplace in the eyes of the Israelites. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that they started playing games with God. They, they, they decided that they would play hokey pokey with God. They'll put their left foot in, but leave the rest of themselves out. They'll put their right foot in and they'll shake it all about, but they'll take their right foot out. They, they, they were in and out with God. And to boot, they even had some other gods on the side. And then they even decided that they would use God as sort of an ATM machine. They would put their card of praise in and type in their pen of worship and all of a sudden God has got to do what they want him to do. They were treating God like a cosmic bellhop, if you will. They thought that because they had the Ark of the Covenant with them, that success and prosperity was guaranteed. And brothers and sisters, on one occasion, they took this Ark of the Covenant into a battle they were having with the Philistines. And they assumed that just because they had this Ark of the Covenant with them, that victory was sure. But they were wrong. They were defeated. And I think I need to tell somebody here early on in this little message Somebody who's playing hokey pokey with God. That, that God will position himself no further in your life than the amount of devotion and consecration you give to him. Did y'all hear what I said? That, that if you want all of God in your life, you've got to give to God you are all. We, we, we sing that song, I want more, 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 Jesus, more of you. But what if he says, I want more, 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 Brother Rakeson, more, 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 Brother Eddington. I want more, 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 Sister Shufa. What if he says, I want more of you? God, God is looking for some folks who, who will be genuine and loyal to him. Amen. God is not looking for part-time lovers. They lost this battle against the, the Philistines because they were not where they should have been with the Lord. Can I just teach this this morning? And, and so the Ark of the Covenant ended up in the hands of the Philistines. And the Philistines took this Ark of the Covenant back to their nation. And, and when they get it back to their nation, they place the Ark of the Covenant in this chamber. I guess that'd be all right, but inside that chamber was another god. It was another statue of another god by the name of Dagon. Y'all know the story? And the Bible tells us that, 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 that when they placed him in this chamber next to this false idol god named 
Dagon, God, Yahweh has to show again that there is no God but the God of heaven. There is no God but the God of the Israelites. And, and, and so, so every time they would go into this chamber, Sister Jackson, and, and, and check on the Ark of the Covenant and upon their false god, Dagon, they would notice that Dagon was always tipped over and bowing down before the one true God, Yahweh. Um, um, uh, and then the last time they went in, Dagon was broken apart, fell to pieces, before the power of Almighty God. All, all I'm trying to tell you is that these children of Israel, they, they lost sight of where God wanted them to be. And so much so that they allowed the symbol of God to be captured by a heathenistic people. I, I see you. And before you start looking down your long Baptist nose, at these children of Israel, many of us have been guilty of the same thing. Oh, I'm going to preach it anyway. Right. Many of us have been guilty of the exact same things. How many times have we compromised and traded the presence and the power of God in our lives for idols? No, not me, Pastor. I ain't got no idols. What, what if I told you that anything or anyone that you give more time, more attention, and more priority than God to you, that's an idol. I don't care if it's a house. I don't care if it's a car. I don't care if it's a job. I don't care if it's a boo or a bay. Anything that you give more attention to and priority to and time is a God, is an idol. To you. Amen. And brothers and sisters, some of us have taken the blessings of God yes. and, and we prioritize the gifts of God that he gives to us over the gift giver. Amen. God blesses you with a car. I used this example before. You've been praying, Lord, can, I, can, can you please bless me with a car? He blesses you with the car. And what do you do once you get that car? You drive right on past the church. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're too, you're too busy for the giver of that gift. At least you can do is come and tell the Lord, thank you. God bless you with that home that you've been asking him about over the years. And now we, we focus upon our own house and what our own house needs over and above his house. God, God gave you that promotion on your job. Other folks getting laid off and look at you. God promoted you on your job and now you've gotten the big head. <laughs> uh, and you start thinking that, 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 that you got the promotion because, because of your hard work. Because, because of your personality. Uh, because of your connections. And, and then we're never satisfied with the blessings of God. We always want more. Um, um, we, we can never be content with what God gives us. We, we want to get all that we can, and then we can all we get, and then we sit on the can. And oftentimes we're willing to give up our God and our convictions and our faith in God for other stuff. God does not, does not have a problem with us seeking after other things. God doesn't have a problem with you getting money. God has no issues with that. But he does say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these things shall be added unto you. See, these children of Israel, they allowed themselves to get to a point where they allow other folks' culture to begin to seep into their culture, and they began to believe what other folks were saying. 
I just said something. Um, um, I got the microphone, so I'm gonna preach anyway. Y'all not gonna like me. Uh, part of the issue that we are having in the black community, and, and if you're here today and 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 you're not African American, don't identify as African American, we have adopted you, and you black too. Um, and so, and so, part of, part of the issue that we're having in the black community is that we have become too willing to let go of God. The same God that our ancestors prayed to and cried out to in, in the throes of slavery. Now, now we just give that up. We've evolved and we've advanced past that God. We want to be so much like other folk that we're beginning to let go of God. For the first time we've gotten to a place where we've become uh, seemingly so disrespectful and we no longer have the kind of reverence for God that we used to have for God. Now, I'm just 37. I caught the tail end of that. I, I still remember a time when folks would have their, their beard and the preacher show up and they'll try to hide the beard. Now they'll stand right there and drink the beard. What happened to the reverence? What happened to the respect that we had for our God? And then we're, we're walking around here so entitled as if God owes us something. As if God has to do something for us just because we've been in the struggle. The fact of the matter is we have got to get back to God. We've got to get back to the place where God is the most important one to us. We, we get involved in all of these political conversations and we, 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 we're trying to figure out how to deal with gun violence and we're trying to figure out how to deal with black on black crime and we're trying to figure out how we can deal with police brutality. Listen, uh, the way we deal with anything is the same way grandma and grandpa told you how to deal with it a long time ago. And that is carrying yourself back to the Lord. And, and the further we get away from God, the more mess we're going to find ourselves in. And if you so much want to be like other folks, <clears throat> I hope you know that those other folks have had their struggles as well. They've had trouble and they, they, they've always fought against each other. Don't, don't think you're going into a utopia. Don't think that the grass is greener on the other side. We've got to get to a place where we don't get so caught up in the stuff of life. And we've got to get caught up in God again. Families need to come back together. Churches need to come back together. <clears throat> We're so busy comparing bank account numbers and so busy comparing membership numbers. And who, who cares how big your steeple is if the folks inside are dying? Amen. Lost it on their way to hell. Amen. We've got to get back to God. So the Israelites, they had forgotten about God. And they wanted to be like other people. God, we want to be, we want to be like the Hittites and the Amorites. They have, <coughs> they have a, a human king. They have human government. Theocracy was cool for a little while, but, 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 but we want to be like them now. Send us a king. 
me say this and I'll leave it alone. Some of us <coughs> are going to follow the Republicans and the Democrats straight to the pit of hell. Did y'all hear what I said? <coughs> we get on these bandwagons and we think that everything they tell us is gospel truth. We turn on the news to hear the gospel of the Republicans and the Democrats. You keep that up. God has a line. God has a law. God has a standard. We need to understand that all of these people want from you is your vote. And they'll tell you whatever you want to hear to get that vote. But what they won't tell you is they don't care about your soul. Right is still right. Wrong is still wrong. And I don't care what they say. We've got to get back to God. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you this morning? So how do we do that? <coughs> I hope you didn't close your Bibles. We're going to be using it today. Verse 1 says, And the men of Kirjath Jarum came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, verse 2, while the ark abode, here we go again, Kirjath Jarum, <clears throat> that the time was long, watch this, for it was 20 years. The Ark of the Covenant was sitting up in somebody's house for 20 years. And all of the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Listen, the first thing that we've got to do if we're going to get back to God, is we have to first of all make sure that our relationship with God does not grow stale. They, they, had, they had gotten to the place to where they, they just had the Ark of the Covenant just sitting somewhere. They, they, they wasn't worshiping like they should have been worshiping. They weren't praying like they should have been praying. They, they weren't following his law like they ought to. They didn't give the kind of reverence and the, <coughs> and the respect that they should have. And because of that, their relationship with God grew stale. Oh, I got time. I'll do it tomorrow. Join the choir, I'll do it tomorrow. Come to Bible study, I'll do it tomorrow. Come to Sunday school next Sunday. And over, over time, their relationship with God grew stale. <clears throat> the Bible teaches that, <clears throat> Paul says, uh, to Timothy, stir up the gift that, that's within you. <clears throat> we, we got into the place uh, that we've allowed our relationship with God to go or grow cold and stale, not only with God, but with one another. Are y'all hearing me? We, we've gotten to this mindset, we've bought into this mindset uh, uh, of individualism over community, that, that one has to work and, and, and one has to, to, to believe more in individualism <clears throat> in order for him or her to be successful and that their success is tied to them and them alone. Yeah. I'm just teaching here. The, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the answer is not found in the individual. The answer is found in the collective. Listen, I'm not the body of Christ alone. But I am the body of Christ along with the collective of believers, baptized believers in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> no man, no woman is an island unto themselves. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, we need one another. Just like you need preaching from me, I need your prayers. 
We need one another. <clears throat> and at the same time, we can't let our relationship with God go cold. We've got to remember, we've got to realize that it, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, listen, we'd be in some bad shape. <clears throat> and so, just like the Israelites, we're fighting and we're losing at the same time. Are y'all hearing me today? Because we're trying to move on our own. We're trying to move without God. But then not only that, look at verse 3 and 4. <clears throat> the Bible says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, <clears throat> Excuse me. If you do not, I mean, if you do return unto the Lord, you do it with all of your hearts. Then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord <clears throat> and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and serve the Lord <clears throat> only. Second thing we got to do is reject backsliding. Y'all don't like me in here. Y'all don't like me in here. Reject backsliding. This whole idea of coming to God and then leaving God. Coming to worship and then leaving worship. Come one Sunday and then the pastor got to call you or the deacons got to call you and then you come back and then then you leave again. This, 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 this whole idea of coming to God and leaving God and playing hide and go seek with God. Like God is supposed to come and find us every time we go running. <clears throat> that has to come to an end. I'm telling you that because I love you. We've got to get to the place where we realize that we need God. But here's what happens. Here's what happens, just like it happened with the children of Israel, it's happening to us today. Amen. Here's what happens. We find ourselves in, in some trouble. Y'all know this story. We find ourselves with our backs against the wall. Oh, yes, sir. We cry out to God. We run back to God. God in his great mercy, God in his great grace, he hears, he answers your prayer. He delivers you out of your trouble. Um, he blesses us. We're grateful for a season. And then, what do we do? We run right back in the trouble. Right back with our backs against the wall. Once again. And then we cry out. Oh, on and on and on and on. It's a vicious cycle. We've got to learn to reject backsliding. I'm not saying that you're never going to make a mistake. I'm just saying if you make a mistake, don't go away from the Lord. That's where your grace is. That's where your mercy is. That's where forgiveness is. And you know it. That's why you keep coming back. <clears throat> Verse 3, Samuel says that the first thing you got to do is you got to return. You got to turn around. Uh, some of y'all, we, we have GPS on our phones. Uh, I, I, I can go anywhere in the world because I got GPS on my phone. I love GPS because it doesn't matter how many wrong turns I make. It doesn't matter how many exits I miss. I can look to my GPS and the GPS will tell me what I need to do to get back on track. Um, 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 uh, that, that, that's what God, that's what the Holy Spirit is in our life. But then listen, Christ reminds us that there's only one way to get to the Father. All, all roads do, <coughs> do not lead back to the Father. There is one way back to the Father. And Jesus says, that's through me. I am the way. You, you, you can't take any detours or, or back roads to get back to the Lord. You, you've got to turn around. Yeah. Repent, that's it. And head back toward God. 
and then, and then he says, when you do turn around and, and start heading back to God, he says, you can't just do it any kind of a way. He says, you can't come half-stepping. <clears throat> you can't do it half-heartedly. He says that when you do it, you have to do it with all of your heart. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Wholeheartedly. You know what wholeheartedly is. You know exactly what, what it means to go after something with all of your heart. We, we, we're uh, wholehearted about so many, so many other things, but not gone. <clears throat> we can shout until our voices are gone <clears throat> at concerts and at sporting events. But we won't open our mouths in worship. And we don't care how crazy we look, we'll sit in that arena and we'll do the wave in the arena, all around the arena. But we can't, God can't get a, a wave in the sanctuary. And, and then, and then, and this is for all y'all who say, Pastor, preach too long. We'll sit up and binge watch entire seasons of shows you like. We need to turn around, and when we turn around, be wholehearted about the Lord. And then he says, you need to put away strange gods. I'm trying to hurry up through here, y'all. We, 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 we need to reject strange gods, strange ideas, strange doctrine. I, I often tell other ministers uh, uh, who are coming up with these new concepts and, 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 and um, <clears throat> these new teachings about God. Listen, you mean to tell me that with over 2,000 years of church history, you're the first one to ever see that. You're the first one to ever discover that. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. We need to reject these strange ideas and these strange doctrines. We, we, we're living in a day where, where anything goes, literally anything goes. Everything is permissible, even in the church. Who made Pastor mad? He up here fussing with, I'm not mad, I'm just reading the text. There, there needs to be a clear line of difference between the world and the church. And sadly, dear hearts, there, there, there's too much mixture going on yes, in the church. There, 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 there's a problem when the church looks like and sounds like the club. He says, put away strange gods. And then look at verse 5. Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah. He says, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. We, we, we've got to have some folks around us that know how to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, 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 uh. My, mama told us that prayer changes things. And, and, and if prayer doesn't change the thing, prayer will change you. Are y'all in here with me? The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, watch this, and turn, there it is again, from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin I, and I will heal their land. Verse 6, and they gathered together to Mitzvah, and they drew water, and they poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and, and said, there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mitzvah. 
Uh, he says, and the children of Israel said to Samuel, I'm hearing along, cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering, holy unto the Lord. <clears throat> and Samuel cried unto the Lord of it, for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And watch this, as Samuel was offering up the burnt offerings, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. <laughs> but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day. Listen, they repented on that same day. They confessed on that same day. And the Bible says at that moment, at the moment of repentance, at the moment of sacrifice, the Bible says that God thundered. He didn't wait to see if what they were saying was true, if they were going to follow through. But at the moment you decide to turn around, the moment you decide to repent, the moment you decide to get it right, God has a way of adjusting himself. He has a way of clearing his throat. He has a way of clapping his hands, and it will be thunder, and the problem that you thought you had is no longer a problem. And the men of Israel went out of Mitzvah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under beth -car. Here it is. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mitzvah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. In other words, the Bible says that when Samuel looked up and he realized that the Philistines had been defeated, after, after it seemed like all hope was lost, it seemed that, again, their backs were against the wall. That, that's, that's when God cleared his throat. And to them, it sounded like thunder. And God, Sister Shuford, showed up, and God showed out. My mom used to say that he may not show up when you want him, but you sure going to want him when he shows up. God shows up, and he does what only God can do. The Bible says that Samuel, he then takes a stone, and he sets it between Mitzvah and Shen, and, and called it Ebenezer, saying, hitherto, or up to this point, the Lord has helped us. Their hearts, I, I'm done now, but I, I wonder if there are any Ebenezer stones in the house of the Lord. It, the Ebenezer stones, they, they, it's, a, it's, it's a place, a, a marker, where we say that it was nobody but the Lord that delivered you. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've got a lot of Ebenezer stones throughout my life. I, I've had to lay down some Ebenezer stones because I've been in some situations and, and in some places in life that the Lord delivered me out of, and I knew that it was nobody but the Lord. Uh, and, and, and I know that it was nobody but God that brought me through this. And, and every now and then, Sister Shufford, I have to go back to those Ebenezer stones. When, when I'm facing something that seems insurmountable, when I'm facing the impossible, I, I go back to those Ebenezer stones to remind myself that if he was God enough to bring me through that, then he's shown enough God enough to bring me through this. And I wonder if there's anybody here today who has some stones of remembrance that when they think back on the goodness of Jesus and all that God has brought them through, your soul looks back and says, Hallelujah! Thank God for saving me. Y'all ought to help me close this little message today. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing to aid you, and he's carry, he'll carry you through. I wonder, do I have a witness this morning? I said, do I have a witness this morning? Won't he carry you? 
through danger seen and unseen won't he bring you out won't he deliver you won't he heal you won't he pick you up turn you around place your feet on solid ground won't he give you food when you're hungry water when you're thirsty he'll put clothes on your back shoes on your feet a little money in your pocket won't he do it i said have you tried him today won't he do it won't he make a way out of no way won't he do it open doors close in your face won't he do it have you tried him won't he do it shout yes i said shout yes shout yes Every now and then. Every now and then. You ought to look back at those stones. And God will remind you that I'm able to do everything, anything but fail. I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. If you would just come. Don't get it twisted. God ain't going to chase you around. God is not playing hokey pokey and hide and go seek with you. He says, if any man will, any woman will, let him come. Let her come. And I don't know about you, but with God on your side, He's more than the world against you. Doors of the church are open. If you're here today, and your prayer and your desire is to get back to God, I want to invite you to come. Don't be embarrassed. This is between you and the Lord. And truth be told, we've all played the prodigal with the Lord from time to time. But when you come to yourself and you realize that you're not simply a servant, but you're a son or a daughter of God, There Jesus will wait with his arms outstretched waiting to bring you in again. I love that story of the prodigal son. It always blesses me because of what's not in that text. Because when that boy gets up out of that hall pen and he's making his way back to his father's house. He discovers that his father is standing out in the middle of the road. <laughs> and he's looking. He didn't, he didn't go chase him in the far country, but, but he was always looking. Maybe today. Maybe today. Maybe today. And then when that son finally gets to his father, he don't say, go, go get yourself cleaned up. Servants, wash him up. Bible says that he throws himself on his neck embraces his dirty son his disobedient and wayward son he kisses him give me the ring puts a ring on his finger bring me a robe puts a robe go kill the fatted calf it's time to party over that one son. And Jesus stands here today. Maybe today. Is today your day? The doors of the church are open. Come to Jesus while you still have time. If 
you're here today. Choir is coming. Saints are praying. The Holy Spirit is having his way. If you're here today, why don't you come? I don't know about tomorrow. I just the skies may turn to gray. I don't worry on the future, for I know Yeah.